welcome back. Our second film tonight is set in London and Scotland, and more precisely, inside the mind of an outstanding, and for reasons you'll soon detect, most astonishing young musician. Good Vibrations is a portrait of a unique talent. Evelyn Glennie is a professional musician who demands to be heard. Her success has been recognized by audiences both abroad and in her hometown of Aberdeen, where she can regularly fill its largest theater. Evelyn studied percussion and piano at London's Royal Academy of Music, and on her graduation last year, won the Queen's Commendation for All-Round Excellence. Her success extraordinary is that Evelyn Glennie is profoundly deaf. She has been bolstered by friends and teachers and by her own determination. Evelyn uses her other senses to compensate for the lack of hearing. She has taught herself to lip read perfectly. Got any drinks? What? Got any drinks? Oh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I don't like about playing in theatres is that. The audience is usually in, in darkness, absolute darkness, and um, so I don't know, I mean, I, how much clapping did I get? I'm, I'm not too sure, actually. It all happened so quickly. <laughs> At the age of six, I experienced some difficulties with my hearing, but I didn't find I was losing my hearing at all. It was just little things niggling me, such as sore ears. But it wasn't until the age of 12 that I was given my hearing aids, and that was when I went to secondary school, and that was when I started percussion. It all happened together. And I was classed as profoundly deaf at that time. Hello, Rosewood. Rosewood. Yeah. My How percussion teacher so? was very, very good, and he gave me such encouragement and made me so enthusiastic about it. And it was really him who who gave me faith in that he said, look, why don't you progress your playing further by going to a music school? I disposed of my hearing aids just before I went to the Royal Academy of Music in London. I found that they made things louder, but not any clearer. And I discovered that by not wearing them, I could in fact hear a lot more. By that I mean I could hear so much more inside myself by watching the players in an orchestra for instance play or by looking at a score I wasn't distracted by by any sounds I was hearing. school for the deaf. The children there, their hearing ranges from partially to totally. They would all experience music differently. In fact, everyone, hearing or non-hearing people, hear music through the body. And all it is is that you're simply distinguishing the, the vibrations you hear, or feel rather. Over here. I can find the rhythm. How can you find the rhythm? I can mostly feel what I'm doing. I, I can't feel the xylophone. I hear it very well because it's so loud, it's very piercing. But because the sound is so short, it doesn't travel up the stick. If I play the marimba, it sustains more and I can feel a lot, lot more coming up the shaft through my fingertips onto my hand. 
when I play the side drum, that one, I, when I play, I have my body next to the side drum so that I'm actually playing like, like this so that I have complete contact with the drum and I can feel everything. It's, it's just like bullets coming through your, your tummy. The reason my speech is so clear is because, one, I've heard for such a long time. I've acquired an accent. Um, I'm aware of how other people talk. I know, because I play music, how phrasing should be, how I should lilt, have a lilt to my, my voice, um, how I should accent words, how I should phrase sentences, dynamics, things like that. And this is something, obviously, that is so, so hard for children who have been born deaf. Evelyn has been a protege of James Blades. For many years, the country's leading percussionist. Feel it vibrating. He reckons that one of Evelyn's greatest achievements is to tune the timpani. How do you know when you strike the drum, you do not hear it, do you? Mm -hmm. How do you know that you are in tune to that note? Because I, I know the range of the note, yeah. the range of the drum, yeah. and I know the tension. Yes. I know how much I press the pedal. Press on your foot. And I can... My fingernail yeah. on the drum. Or, or yeah, yeah, the stick. Yeah. And... So that if, if the drum is tuned high... My stick will... Yeah, mm -hmm. your, your stick will come up and there are more vibrations. When it's high, yeah. n n no, it, they're very close. Very close, yes. Yeah. I would say that she will make history. Everyone in the profession, they only have one word for. She's remarkable. We know that God has taken that wonderful sense of hearing, but he has given her back a sense that has compensated that. She feels where we hear, she feels much more deeply probably than we do. And that's why I think she expresses music so beautifully. I may hear things that you can't hear. I may hear things differently. I may hear things because I think I can hear them. I may hear music because I think I can hear it, because I can see it. If I'm in London, amongst all the traffic, it's absolute chaos. And you've just got to be so alert and look all around you because cars come here, there and everywhere. <laughs> lives in a top floor flat in North London with patient neighbours but prefers the tranquility in which she was brought up on a farm near Aberdeen. It's just so so peaceful the, the surroundings are so peaceful I mean you can see the silence it's great. I, mean, I, I usually hear crackles if I'm cycling and it's very windy it'll just be a crackling sound I can rehearse or practice my, my tunes inside myself. They go round and round my head all the time.
coming home, I mean, to my family where I can just really talk my own way. I mean, we, we talk totally different up here and it's so relaxing, whereas you've got to think about what you're saying in London in order to be understood. I can help argue that you were not there. There was no interest in there. Lip reading can be a strain. It's very useful if men do not have beards <laughs> around their mouth. And my second oldest brother has, has got a really bushy one now. I mean, every time I come up from London, um, it seems to be getting bigger and more bushy every time. <laughs> so I think he's deliberately doing it, actually. Oh, it's lived in. Oh, I wish somebody's supposed to care. What you're saying? You got stuff for you. Oh, but they might not want you to get, but I'm saying. Well, as far as I can see, I didn't have any illness of, of any sort. It may be a nerve deafness. I mean, I've been having a lot of tests from two doctors in, at Glasgow University who have taken quite an interest in this. This is the latest attempt to examine the nature of Evelyn's deafness. The tests prove that Evelyn can hear nothing but the very highest notes, above the normal range of hearing. But the doctors have developed a new objective test for Evelyn, using an electroencephalograph. What we're going to do here is to record the brain activity for speech and for music. So if you just close your eyes, we'll start. Do you assess the general quality of building since the war? Nothing outstanding. I don't think we've in any way advanced on the achievements of the architects. I would. The monitoring shows no brain activity in response to speech, but there's a marked reaction to music. Do you know what the music was? Uh, can you tell me whether it was a, just a violin or an orchestra? No, it was an ensemble, okay. and mainly, I think it was mainly strings because it wasn't heavy enough. The music was uh, Beethoven's Pastoral. Yeah. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps I'm knowing that. And uh, talk was. Despite about the limited talk. response to music. The doctors cannot explain the exact nature of Evelyn's deafness. There uh, may be other problems, though, with her, in that there may actually uh, be blocks in the tracks upwards towards brain integration of the sounds. With music, in each note, there is tremendous repetition of each pattern of the energy. In speech, the transient you get once, and once only, and if you miss the rising uh, few milliseconds, the words become a jumble of noise. Because she cannot hear speech, she concentrates on what she can hear, and therefore, uh, having, if she didn't have the musical ability in the first place, there would be nothing to concentrate on, but having that musical ability, she has been able to develop it in the absence of extraneous noise. Doctors have said that I probably won't get it back. And, um, and people have said to me now, well, you know, with all their modern gadgets and what have you, uh, and surgery, you know, that you may regain some of it. But I've thought about it a lot, actually. And I'm not too keen, I don't think. I think... I really just want to stay as I am because I'm just so used to, to hearing the way I do and um, using my hearing system 
to, to play music, basically. Um, I can... I feel I've just got a better understanding of music, and I feel I can hear it a lot, lot better than, than any other musician, somehow. I, I don't really care how I talk um, or if I lose my speech. I'm, I'm just interested in what I do because music's my first language. I'd like to hear a lot more of that, but I'm afraid it's all we've time for. Indeed, it's all for First Tuesday for this month. I'll be back with the next First Tuesday on the First Tuesday in September. See you then. Good night. <laughs>